Hi everyone. Hey, I was on my computer earlier today and I was going through some uh, some files, kind of organizing some things, and I came across a photo uh, of a big fish that, that we had caught uh, over the summer. And it was a memorable fish because it was, it was a fish that I think probably for sure would have died um, if I wouldn't have done uh, some very specific things and had some very specific tools in the boat with me at the time. Um, and I think that some of these tools are, are just ones that a lot of musky anglers are sleeping on. I, you know, I've seen on social media, people will kind of post all the, the different tools that they have. And I was kind of surprised, um, you know, to see some, some things that are pretty important to me that I use a lot in the boat when I'm working on fish, that uh, it seems like maybe quite a few other people are, are sleeping on these or, or missing them. And then also kind of a unique strategy as well. Uh, that, you know, full disclosure, many, many years ago, I had a big fish die in my boat and I kind of beat myself up about it and thought about like, man, what could I have done differently to save that fish? Um, and, and I actually kind of came to a realization of something that I probably could have done. Um, and I think it's something that a lot of people overlook or don't think about. So um, I kind of want to walk you guys through uh, a few of the, of, the, of the tools that I think might be overlooked um, that, that could you know, at some point in your musky fishing career, maybe save a fish, uh, a fish live, a fish or two, uh, save their lives. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to start off here with spreaders. I know that's a pretty common tool. I think everybody has, you know, spreaders in their boat. Um, there's several different versions. I have, you know, I keep both of these jaw spreaders in my boat. Um, and obviously, especially when you get fish that are hooked really deep, which is, by the way, the scenario I was talking about was what we had where we had a fish that I thought would maybe, you know, come close to dying on us. So, but a tool that's overlooked by a lot of people, and I find myself uh, in recent years very rarely using these spreaders, either one. Um, and kind of the reason is it just seems like, you know, you're trying to keep the fish in the water in the net, you're working on it, and then you're trying to get these, these spreaders in their mouths. And then a lot of times, you know, the fish is thrashing around, the spreaders can kind of get off kilter. It's hard to like see in there with what you're doing. And then you're trying to work around the spreaders on one side or the other as well. And so actually um, an overlooked uh, tool that, that I really think everybody should have a pair of is uh, these Lindy fish handling gloves. And I'm not talking about using these gloves for actually like handling the fish as far as like holding it up for a picture. Um, you know, I'm sure they would work for that, but they are kind of rough and, and, and maybe a little bit thick for that where I, you know, I, I think there maybe could be some better softer gloves for that particular purpose. But, but here's how I'm using these things and why I think everyone should have them is uh, they're Kevlar coated and allegedly hook proof and teeth proof. I can tell you though, that, that, that you know, buyer beware, they, they can still penetrate, right? So, but um, I got one for each hand and kind of what I've been doing instead of using a jaw spreaders is a lot of times I will just reach in and right at, you know, right at the front, the beak of the, of the muskie's jaw, there's, there's really not much for teeth there. I mean, there's a few, but it's usually not too bad. It's on, on the side of their mouth where there's really long teeth. And so you can actually, if you have these gloves, you can just stick your thumb right, you know, grab the bottom lip of the muskie, kind of like a bass and kind of like, you know, while it's in the water, look and see what you're doing. If it's something that's really deep and you have, you know, a second person in the boat, then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of put, you know, my thumb on the bottom jaw and then I'll hold the top jaw that there's a few more sharp teeth on the top one. So you got to kind of be careful what you're doing. But uh, I, I do it all the time. I use these gloves, right? And then I just kind of pry their mouth open while the fish is in the water. And then the other person can kind of reach down in there. Um, now, one of the overlooked things that we did uh, with this particular fish, uh, and also how I've had fish die on me, is you get you know, a big bladed bucktail, like a 10 or a 13 blade, and the fish eats it really, really deep down there, right? And, and you know, this, this back hook right here can be all the way you know, down in their gills. And, and a lot of times when you get those deep biters too, it can be after dark, which just makes it even more difficult to see what's going on. Um, and so uh, one thing that, uh, that I did that, that just, it was, it, it makes this go so much and 
incredibly faster if you do this. You, you kind of have to acknowledge that you know your this bucktail is going to be dead, right? You're going to kill it. But uh, but here's what I'm saying is instead of trying to look around all the skirt material, okay, for a really deep hook fish, all you have to do is just take. But this is, by the way, another tool. I feel like almost everybody has like a standard bolt cutters like this. So um, there's some other overlooked uh, think tools I'm going to get into as well. But um, but anyway, everyone usually has a standard uh, Nipex like this, right? But what you do is instead of cutting hooks, the first thing you can actually do is just take the, the cutters and just snap the top of the bucktail off, okay? And then you can just reach in with your pliers and then all the stuff just starts to slide off, right? And you can just pull it all off with the pliers until you're left with this, okay? And then, and then it's really, really easy to see what you're doing, right? Much, much easier. Here. Um, you know, now all you have is a bare hook to deal with. And here's the challenge is a lot of times if it's really far down there, um, you, you don't want to twist this hook out. You actually want to push backwards. And so um, another, another tool that I don't see a, a, a lot of people like using or having in their boat is a hook pick. Okay. Um, I like one with a big, uh, this big S shape at the bottom. There's a few different brands. Rapala makes one. Um, I think Stealth makes one as well. Uh, maybe I'll try to throw a few links uh, in the description for you for if you're if you're interested in buying one of these. They're not. I mean, they're they're you know considerably less than just what one musky lure would would uh, cost anyway. But anyway, where this tool comes in is it's really handy when you get a super deeply hooked fish. You can, you can reach in because what you actually want to do is you want to push further back in to like back the hook out, right? And if you try to twist it, uh, you know, then you're doing more damage to the fish. And a lot of times if you have this pick, you can just kind of hook it right on here like this and then you push it and, it, and you can push it backwards. And once it's popped out, sometimes you can kind of, then you can hook this thing back on, you know, the other way like this and, and pull it out like a game of operation. Um, but a lot of times you can also, once it's out, you can just, depending on where you're at, if you can see the gill plate, you can actually just push it out, um, you know, through the gill plate instead of having to bring it all the way out the other way and, and, and worry about it catching on something. So um, hook pick is another, I think, must have tool that everybody should have in the boat. You know, at some point, if you have a really deeply hooked fish, I just, I honestly don't know what I would do without it. So um, by the way, that fish that we had, it, it was kind of a combination of all these things, right? It ate the bucktail deep. I immediately like saw how deep it was and just snipped the bucktail, slid all the stuff off. We had the bare hook. I got the hook pick out, had my gloves on, reached in there, boom, popped it out. And I mean, it actually went faster than unhooking, you know, <laughs> just like a lot of standard fish, right? And, uh, and the release was amazing too, like just blasted away and felt really good about it because that's the exact scenario that I did have a fish die on me, um, you know, many years prior to that before I learned that lesson. So I wanted to share it with you. So hopefully uh, you don't have to learn the hard way and have a fish die on you out there. There's also a few more tools I'd like to share with you. Another overlooked uh, tool that I have in my boat that seems to get used a handful of times every year is I also have, a, you know, a giant bowl cutter. This is one of those ones that, you know, you, you get at like, uh, you know, a Menards or Home Depot or Lowe's type of place, right? Um, but you can cut through like a padlock with this, right? So basically I call it, my nickname is the Jaws of Life. So uh, sometimes if you, you know, you got a big like nine knot hook um, and depending on where the, you know, where and how the fish is, just sometimes um, with, with, where it's hooked, it's better just to, clip right through um, all three barbs at once, right? Like you can just cut through the shank with this where like a Nipex isn't strong enough to do that. So I like to have this, um, there's been times too where I've cut baits in half, you know, bigger baits with like stronger wire and stuff like that. So I just like to have it. Um, it seems like, you know, a, a handful of times every year I'll end up using it just because it's a better tool. So I always like to have that on hand. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about uh, pliers. Um, I know everyone obviously has like long pairs of pliers, but um, this year I actually, you know, got to be in a few other people's boats who, you know, pretty experienced people. And I was kind of surprised. I feel like there's a lot of people running around with, with uh, pliers that are just too short. Um, you know, I would say minimum length is probably like 13 and a half inches. 
uh, where I see a lot of people running around with maybe like tens, elevens. And again, when you have, you know, big fish hooked in, in, in deep places and you gotta be reaching around, you just need that extra length. Um, I, I carry a bunch of different styles. Uh, I got some long ones with the, with the kind of the hooked nose like this. Sometimes that's good for popping them out on the sides. Um, you know, I got some, some that are straight like this. And then this one was new I got this year and I really kind of like this one. It's uh, just because you can, it's easier to open and close um, without kind of needing the width at the mouth of the, you know, of the fish. You don't have to get really wide with your handles. You can kind of reach in there and grab it and, and, and pull it out. Um, so, so that's another one. And then actually the last one, this is kind of a weird one. And again, like I don't use this uh, a lot, but there's just, I like to have all these tools because depending on what's going on and how the fish is hooked and the waves and everything else, just sometimes there's just certain tools that work better, they're efficient, they're, 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 they're quicker, right, to get the job done. So I always just like to carry a, a, a pair of channel lock pliers too. Um, I don't use them very often, but in certain situations, if you're doing a lot of cutting, um, you know, and, you know, if you're, or you're just trying to like hold, sometimes you have to hold, you know, the hook with like one hand while you're trying to cut with the other hand, especially if you're like by yourself, right? And so sometimes a channel lock just gives you a better grip uh, to hold something in place. Um, and also sometimes opening up the channel lock so you can actually just grab the bait, um, you know, because of where it's positioned, right? And you're cutting hooks, but without having to, you know, put your hand in a vulnerable position to getting hooked. So those are just a few thoughts I had that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe there's at least one takeaway or something new that you haven't thought about before in there, either a new tool that you can add to your boat, or maybe just, you know, think about cutting that, that, that wire on the bait the next time uh, you got a fish hook deep. Um, if you found this uh, video helpful, uh, please, you know, give it a like. So I, I know that you like this content and found it useful. And uh, if you haven't already, I'd also appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. And thanks for watching.